Hello Nidorinars and Nidorinos, it is King Nido here and today we are coming to you from Fortree City where the Flying Type Tempest are trying to lock up their place in the Elite Four heading into the Victory Road series but trying to stop them are the Akala Capsules who have been making a charge up the leaderboard and are currently in a Leaders 8 position and they want to hold on to that so let us know in the comments below who you think will win. Will it be the Flying Types? Will it be the Rock Types? Let's send it down. That's right, the Akala Capsule is currently sitting in 11th, coming off two victories and starting out with Garganapple and Spiritomb. It will be Iron Jugulus and Talonflame starting out for the Fortree Tempest and immediately Spiritomb will be exerting that pressure over the field and it will also be terrestrializing into the Rock type. That is why it is able to be on the Akala Capsules this season, shedding that Ghost Dark typing and taking on that spectacular Rock type form here. But the Fortree Tempest with the speed advantages, Talonflame immediately Sending Spiritomb back to the bench with that Dragon Tail. It doesn't want to deal with the Thrasher Pokemon. Out in its place comes Avalog in its Hisuian form. Being dragged out onto the field as Iron Jugulus now with the Swift. Will connect with both Rock-type Pokemon for not very effective damage. Garganapple is going to respond though with the Dark Void, which it is not allowed to use. So it will be unsuccessful in Talonflame with the Will-O-Wisp onto Avalok is going to leave it with that burn status condition which is going to cut into that massive 127 base attack it is a very physical Pokemon Iron Jugulus following up with the Growl is also going to lower the attack of Avalok and lower the attack of Garganackle in the process as Avalok now going with the Dragon Darts connecting with Iron Jugulus very minimal damage and Talonflame as well and now we get Garganackle following up with the Syrup Bomb which is not very effective on Talonflame, but it is going to cover it in that sticky candy syrup, which is going to lower its speed for the next few turns, as Avalog is going to be hurt by that burn, and there's Talonflame having its speed that lowered, this making Iron Jugulus the quickest on the field, and telling Avalog to just bring it with that taunt, and Avalog will be falling for that taunt, as Talonflame is still quicker than the Rock types, it goes for the Aurora Veil, but this is going to fail here, and Avalog now is unable to go for a move so due to falling for that taunt but now we get the triple dive from Yaga Knackle connecting with Talonflame and this will be super effective but I do not think it will be enough to get the elimination Talonflame is able to hold on but barely after a critical hit on that third connection and that is not what the fine types want as they currently sit in third place on the leaderboard and they want to stay in that top four in that elite four as we get closer to the victory road series the headlong rush from iron jugulus super effective on the garganackle gets a really good hit as iron jugulus does lower its defense and special defense to get that good connection and talonflame is going to follow it up with the blood moon now this is not very effective on garganackle as avalog with no moves left is going to struggle going for iron jugulus for very little damage and avalog is going to be getting the recoil damage in the process and Garganackle with the retaliate going for Iron Jugulus gets a good strike there onto Iron Jugulus there as Avalok continuing to feel the effects of this burn the Fortress Tempest have done well to keep Avalok as much out of this matchup as they can as Iron Jugulus with the fling here it is going to fling its leopard berry at Garganackle which Garganackle tanks heavily practically catching that berry and eating it and now we get Talonflame with the double edge onto Avalog. Avalog tanking that move as well as Talonflame does get the recoil damage from that move, but it is able to hold on. But Avalog continues to struggle going for Iron Jugulus instead of eliminating Talonflame, who is such an easy target right now. And Garganackle with the knockoff is going to take Talonflame out of this matchup, giving the Akala Capsules the early lead here. As Iron Jugulus is currently on the field by itself, Garganackle did knock off that Talonflame. Leopard Berry, but Avalog is eliminated from that burn, so immediately the playing field is level. As we know, Spiritomb will be coming back out on the field. It will be Honchkrow coming out for the Fortree Tempest. And there is that Terrasta Pokemon again exerting its pressure over the field as Iron Jugulus is going to go for the Outrage onto Garganackle, and Garganackle is eliminated, so the Fortree Tempest have quickly taken the lead here. And Honchkrow looking to follow it up is going to go with the Acid Spray onto Spiritomb. It's not very effective there on the Rock type, but it is going to lower its special defense a great deal as Spiritomb goes for the Aromatic Mist. And it does have 108 in those defensive stats, both special and physical. Keep that in mind. Colossal now coming out onto the field. Nine Jugulus continues its outrage. Going for Spiritomb. Gets the critical hit, but Spiritomb holds on. And Honchkrow is going to bring down the Judgment. And Spiritomb will not pass Judgment. It has been eliminated. 
Got the Four Tree Tempest now are starting to build all the momentum here in this match as Honchkrow gets an attack boost due to that hidden ability Moxie that it has. And we got the Energy Ball from Colossal going for Iron Jugglers. Gets a good hit for a not very effective move there. And now Colossal is going to be joined by Iron Thorns on the field as Iron Jugglers continues that outrage onto Iron Thorns. Gets a good hit there. Welcoming that electric rock type to the field, but now Iron Jugglers is going to be confused due to the fatigue of that outrage. And this allows Iron, uh, Iron Thorn, sorry, to go for the string shot. This is going to greatly lower the speed of the two flying type Pokemon on the field. It'll be really interesting to see if Iron Thorns is now the quickest on the field, as Colossal, with the coaching, is looking to help out Iron Thorns here by giving it an attack boost. Iron Thorns already has that 134 base attack and even getting a boost in that 110 base defense as the synthesis from Honchko will fail because it is still at full strength. And this allows Iron Thorns to go with the bubble beam onto Honchko. Gets that critical hit as well. And Iron Jugglers needs to avoid doing damage to itself because the Fortress Tempests are still in control. But unfortunately, in its confused state, it does do damage for, to itself. And it's now in knockout range. This allows Colossal to go with the stun spell. This is going to slow down Iron Jugglers even more, making it paralyzed. It may even be unable to move due to that paralysis as Honchko goes with the milk drink. It really wants to be at full strength. It is going to get itself back there with that milk drink. And now Iron Thorns with the Scorching Sands, but it doesn't affect Honchkrow because the flying types are immune to ground type moves. Colossal though is going to go for the wrap, and this will connect with Honchkrow instead of trying to get that elimination of Iron Jugglers. Honchkrow now is going to go with the Burning Jealousy, connecting with Colossal and Iron Thorns, but it does activate that Steam Engine ability, boosting the speed of Colossal and Iron Jugglers has snapped out of its confusion. It is going to go with the Lumina Crash here on the Colossal. Gets an okay hit there, but it is also going to lower that special defense of Colossal a great deal in the process as Honchko is feeling the effects of that wrap and the very speedy Colossal darting around the field with the Hammer Arm connects heavily onto Honchko. There, great hit, lowering that speed now of Colossal that was just boosted. And Iron Thorns is going to follow it up with the Belly Drum. It's going to cut into its health, and it is now in knockout range, but it has maximized its attack. It's an easy target for the Four Tree Tempest as the slam on the Colossal from Honchko is not very effective. Effective and Iron Jugglers is unable to move due to its paralysis. This is great for the Akala capsules as Honchkrow is taking damage from the wrap here. And now Colossal with the Tar Shot. Instead of going for the easy elimination of Iron Jugglers, it is going to lower Iron Jugglers' speed, but it's already paralyzed and now it's become weaker to fire type moves. But now Iron Thorns with the pain split between Iron Jugglers and Iron Thorns, there is not much pain to be shared there as the acupressure from Honchkrow is going to boost its evasiveness a great deal. And we get the defend order from Iron Jugglers. I don't know if boosting its defenses will prevent it from being eliminated. It is such an easy target right now, boosting both that physical and special defense. Honchkrow is still feeling the effects of that rapid. Now it is in knockout ranges. Colossal could capitalize going with the bounce it is going to bounce up high into the sky and iron thorns who's also an easy target goes with the leaf blade takes honchkrow out of the match with a not very effective critical hit honchkrow is taken out as iron thorns is still an easy target iron jugglers could get the elimination but instead it sets up the electric terrain this is actually really interesting because this will benefit both iron thorns and iron jugglers because of that cork drive ability and in doing so, Iron Jugglers gets a boost to its special attack, and Iron Thorns gets a boost to its attack, but it's already maximized that attack. That is Killer Watch now comes out onto the side of the Fortree Tempest, and it is immediately met by that not very effective bounce from Colossal, and it's going to respond with the Peck, a not very effective move of its own here, as Iron Thorns now, with the lock on, it is going to lock on two killer watch will see if it goes for a one hit KO move but Iron Jugglers yet again unable to move due to that paralysis here and this allows Colossal to go for the poison gas it won't work on Iron Jugglers because it's already paralyzed but killer watch will be feeling the effects of that poison status condition in between turns Killer Watchel is going to go with the triple dive in response. This is going to be super effective on Colossal as well. And it does get the steam engine boost on that first one. But it's going to be connected with the second hit of the triple dive. So it's only a double dive and Colossal is eliminated. There's only two Pokemon remaining for the Akala Capsules. There's still four Pokemon remaining for the Four Tree Tempest. There's Iron Thorns is going to go for the Coil. It keeps going with these stat boosts, but its attack is not going to go any higher. It does get a defense boost though. But if it takes any hits, it'll probably be eliminated. It gets the accuracy boost in the process. But we get the Ice Spinner 
from Iron Juggernaut, but Iron Thorns is able to hold on as the electricity does disappear from the field. Iron Juggernaut is still in this matchup, and those cork drives have worn off. And there's Killer Watch will feel the effects of that poison. I cannot believe Iron Thorns is still in this matchup, and it's now going to be joined by Dreadnought on the side of the Akala Capsules. Killer Watch will, with the Strength Sap, very clever, trying to cut into that attack of Iron Thorns here. And it is going to have its health restored in the process. Killer Watch will get him back to full strength. And Dreadnought with the confusion here. But it won't affect Iron Jugulus. Iron Thorns are looking to do its part though. Goes with the triple axle. It is a single axle. And it does get the elimination of Iron Jugulus. But that's super effective critical hit. I don't think it needed to be super effective. I don't think it needed to be critical. But it gets the elimination. And the Akala Capsules desperately needed that. As Killer Watch will, is still feeling the effects of that poisoning in this matchup and it's going to be joined by Salamence. The Fortry Tempest have sent out their pseudo legendary and now we get the double team from Killer Watch. It is going to boost its evasiveness and if it can't be hit it is going to make it so much harder to be eliminated as now the electric terrain is being set up by Salamence. I do not know why it would want to help out Iron Thorns with that boost in that attack that yet again in this matchup. They keep boosting the attack of Iron Thorns as Dreadnought with the sticky web throwing that web out on the side of the Fortree Tempest, but no Pokemon on the Fortree Tempest is going to be landing in that. Iron Thorns with the Poltergeist, and it is going to go for Killer Watchel attacking it with that Leopard Berry here. And Killer Watchel is eliminated from this matchup. That's the third elimination for Iron Thorns. Leveling the playing field. And out comes Noivo. And we have two Dragon Types on the side of the Fortress Tempest. As Noivo immediately sets up the Aqua Ring. Being surrounded by that Veil of Water. And we get the Milk Drink from Salamence. But that does fail. It is at full strength. The Fortress Tempest clearly want to remain at full strength here. And we get the Metal Sound from Dreadnought here. On to Salamence, lowering that special defense a great deal, and Iron Thorns follows it up with another Poltergeist that worked so well the first time. It's going to do it again, this time going for the pseudo legendary. And it is a one hit wonder. Salamence is taken out of this matchup, and the Akala Capsules are in the lead. Noifern is all by itself. It needs to eliminate this dominating Iron Thorns as Dreadnought with the bulk up is going to boost those physical stats, both that attack and defense. It's got that 100. Oh, sorry, I am looking at the stats of Spiritomb, the 115 base attack, but it is not good for Noivo, and it has taken the judgment from Iron Thorns. That Aqua Ring will restore a little bit of that health as Noivo, and with the speed advantage, sets up the Leech Seed onto Dreadnought here. Now, it may be good to go for Dreadnought with that Leech Seed, because it has more health, but the takedown from Dreadnought, a great hit onto Noivo, as Dreadnought does get the recoil damage and Iron Thorns follows it up with the clear smog. Noivern is able to hold on but barely as all stat changes have been eliminated. This is great for Noivern as it is the quickest on the field. It needs to get a quick elimination here. It is going to have some more health restored as well from that Leech Seed. So it's got the Veil of Water. It's got the Leech Seed. It's trying to get this health back to keep it in the matchup. And Noivern now going with the Glare. This is going to leave Dreadnought paralyzed on the field here. So it is going to slow down Dreadnought and potentially make it unable to move. But Iron Thorns is going to go for the Stone Axe. And Noivern is eliminated with that super effective move. And if I'm checking my notes correctly, that is the fifth elimination in this matchup by Iron Thorns. I cannot believe it stayed in this matchup for as long as it did with such little health. The Akala Capsules have worked their way back in and gotten three victories in a row and moved themselves up into ninth place as they have one game left this season. They have a buy in the last round, but next round they will be taking on the Heart Home Spectres. Whereas for the Four Tree Tempest, they do drop down to fourth place, and next round they will be taking on the Moss Deep Mystics. But until then, Nidorinos, Nidorinos, thank you so much for watching. Let us know in the comments below who you thought was the best on field. And if you enjoyed what you saw, please leave a like, share, subscribe. But more importantly, always remember, you are awesome, and I'll see you when you see me.